Good morning and welcome to our April 16, 2019 Board of Commissioners meeting and I ask Commissioner Daughter to release an indication. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, your wisdom, and your support as we begin this meeting. Help us to encourage and engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow clo closer as a group and foster the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that will affect the citizens of Wayne County. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We so have approval to minutes April 2nd meeting. So moved. Motion made. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raise your right hand. Our discussion, just with Jenna, Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, no adjustments this time. Any board member? All right, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Any discussion? Our discussion, all in favor, signify by raise your right hand. Thank you. Special presentation, Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, we do have our uh, some meetings that we will be doing. And what we would like to ask is for each group, if you will come and stand in front and have your pictures taken and the board will stand up behind. So. All right, we'll begin with the uh, one question. Uh, Mr. Honeycutt. So you want, we're going to do them by groups, correct? Right. So, all right, fantastic. All right, uh, the first one goes to Tequila Alston with the library. And I hope I said that right. K. Arnett with the health department. Bonnie Bruce, health department. Christopher Campbell with the sheriff's office. Christopher Dawson with facilities. <coughs> Brian Donahue, DSS. Lori Gardner, DSS. Levante Ingram with the jail. Monica Catter Henry with the health department. Matthew Marino with the sheriff's office. <coughs> Gary and Mason with the jail. Rajal Patel with the health department. Sharika Wadsworth, DSS. <coughs> Phyllis Walters, Health Department. Jessica Ward, DSS. Esmeralda Whitley, Health Department. Sarah Woost or West Emergency Medical Services. I know I butchered that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jacqueline Hudson, Emergency Medical Services. Miranda Lipscomb with facilities. Stephen Taylor, Emergency Medical Services. And Regina White, Facilities. <laughs> All right. Sorry, 
going to double as a photographer. Here. Just takes it so. <laughs> <laughs> that again they're getting the picture from in the uh, oh, yeah. okay thank you Joel thank you Joel <laughs> all right for our five-year pins beginning with Remarco Atkinson school resource officer Maurice Green with facilities Maurice Harden with the jail. Gerilyn Lee, Human Resources. Only five years? <laughs> <laughs> and get ready to retire. Stephen Best, Solid Waste. Christy Mason with the health department. <coughs> Pamela Newcomb with the library. And Bradley Whitmire with the sheriff's office. Apparently, if you guys just stare straight ahead, Joel is magically taking your picture. <laughs> that's fun. And I think that's probably good. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> will be our 10-year service pins beginning with Albert Anders Jr. with the jail. You have to say junior, <laughs> but it says it. <laughs> Richard Carmack with the jail. Lisa Johnson with health, family planning. Devin Green with the jail. Taiwan Miller with the jail. Would you leave them all at work? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jonathan McKinney with the sheriff's office. <laughs> Next will be our 15-year service pins, and we'll begin with Janelle Nava with DSS, or not, Terrence Sutton, Sheriff's Office, thank you for being here, <laughs> William Tart with the Sheriff's Office. Tammy Lance, DSS. Matt Miller, Sheriff's Office. Right, just kind of look ahead and he'll take your picture in two. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen.
Next will be our 20 year. We'll begin with uh, Renee Artis with 4-H. Sharon Cornegi with DSS. And Miss McCullen, I'm, I hope I don't mess up your first name, but Gina? All right, let's all applaud them one more time. All right, hopefully he got that picture while we were doing that. Thank you, ladies. All right, and the next two, um, I think we'll just, well, we'll let each one of them stand here for a moment because these are pretty significant. Uh, for 25 years, Miss Tina Williams with the health department. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. And then our, our final one, um, last but not least, 35 years, Mr. Mm. Tim Rogers, Solid Waste mm. Department. Oh. Congratulations, all. Any board member have a comment? I can make. Thanks for everyone being here, and congratulations on your service being this morning, Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next, we do have a motion to approve the proclamation for the National Day of Prayer, and I do believe we have. Who would like to? Behind you. Check behind you. Behind you. Like read behind you. Oh, <laughs> 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, whereas May 2nd, 2019 is the 68th annual observance of the National Day of Prayer, and whereas the Continental Congress in 1775 asked the colonies to pray for wisdom in forming a nation, and whereas the Senate of the United States, devoutly recognizing the supreme authority and just government of Almighty God in all affairs of men and of nations, has by a resolution requested the President to designate and set apart a day for national prayer and humiliation. And whereas in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a day of fasting and prayer, and whereas in 1952, President Harry Truman signed a joint resolution by the United States Congress declaring an annual national day of prayer, and whereas in 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed an amended law permanently setting the National Day of Prayer as the first Thursday of every May, and whereas in 1988 the United States Congress passed a law directing the President to issue a proclamation each year designating the first Thursday in May as a National Day of Prayer on which the people in the country may turn to God in prayer and meditation at churches, in groups, and as individuals. And whereas the Wayne County Board of Commissioners believes prayer is an important part to our nation and community at this time as it was in the 1700s. And whereas those participating in the National Day of Prayer will pray for the governments, the churches, the brave men and women serving in our armed forces, families, education, the media, businesses, and the economy. All this being done in sincerity and truth, let us then rest humbly in the hope authorized by the divine teachings that the united cry of the nation will be heard on high and answered with blessings no less than the pardon of our national sins 
and the restoration of our now divided and suffering country to its former happy condition of unity and peace. Now therefore be it resolved that the Wayne County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim May 2nd, 2019 as a day of prayer in Wayne County in observance of National Day of Prayer and commends this observation to our citizens. The, the, and the National Day of Prayer service for the past several years has been at the YMCA and we would love for all of you guys to, to be there if you can. It starts at 7 p.m. in the YMCA gymnasium. Um, I think you will be pleased and astonished at the amount of people that attend and the cross section of our community that attends. It's one time during the year when we can come together as a group and praise God. Hey, Bridget, would you the like site, to introduce? Sir? I'm sorry, the site, what did you just? It's a Goldsboro Family YMCA. It's on 1105 Parkway Drive. And the time is what? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And I do want to introduce our CEO. This is Bruce Griffin. He's our new CEO, um, joined us back in November. And um, this is going to be his first National Day of Prayer at the Y. And we're very, very proud of, of what our community does with this Day of Prayer. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Uh, we did end a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we uh, approve the proclamation for the National Day of Prayer as presented. Thank you, Mr. Mayo. I've heard the motion in discussion on the motion. I, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to say I've I've attended that several times and uh, I have really been impressed with the people that they asked to uh, pray and participate in that. Uh, we've had uh, some very important people for Wayne County to participate. Um, the base commander has been involved, some of our surgeons, uh, and just great, great people. Uh, and also a question for the Madam Clerk in Juarez number nine. Uh, I mean, is this a cut and dry can, resolution or can it be changed in any way in the future? Not, not this one, but I'd like to I'd like to see where it says armed forces, families, education, media, business, and economy. I'd I'd like to see first responders in there somewhere. Yes, sir. I'm glad that. Absolutely. That's all I have, okay. Mr. Chair. Anyone else, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I've I've attended the National Day of Prayer, uh, but I've also attended some local churches around over the years. And my point is, thank you for doing this. We need, we actually need in our country, and I think most of us will agree, we need to have a National Day of Prayer every day. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so let's, do, let's don't just do this individually as a National Day of Prayer. Let's make it a point to pray every day individually for our county, our state and our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I, I would just like to. Mr. Mayo is so complete sometimes. Uh, uh, every day in the state of our country, right this day, we all need to pray for our country because it is drifting like a a ship out on the sea that the motor is sort of spurred. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. We need to recognize the need to pray every day for our country. Thank you. All right, thank you for the comments. All in favor, please seek five, raise your right hand. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next, we have our recognition for the uh, National Day of Service. And we just have to Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> well, we do sometimes at church when the preacher says something. Anyway, good morning to everybody. We are so glad to be here again um, this year, and we're so grateful to uh, the county, county commissioners, for recognizing uh, what our senior volunteers do 
uh, what they provide to the citizens of Wayne County. I am Delper McIntyre, and I am the uh, adult services, or I say adult services because I want you all to know that I'm a retired Wayne County employee. Isn't that right, Mr. Parker? Absolutely. Very proud employee, <laughs> retired from Wayne County. And my staff is here with me today, and guess what? They are also retirees of Wayne County. So we're continuing to give back to the county. I have Ms. Clara Murray, who is also retired from the Wayne County DSS, and Ms. Barry Waters, who is retired from the Wayne County Public Library. So we are continuing to do what you all let us do from the beginning. In our young age, we work for the county. And now that we're seniors, we are work still working for the county. Thank you again so much for this opportunity. And I want to say to you that our senior volunteers, just for the month of March, have provided a total of 19,746 volunteer service hours to elderly citizens and children here in Wayne County. So you all, uh, county commissioners, you budget people, think about the amount of money that we're saving you because they're volunteering their time and service to give to um, the citizens of Wayne County. And i like for um, my staff as well as the uh, members of the Wages, Foster Grandparent, and Senior Companion Programs to stand um, as we read the proclamation that's been prepared just for them. Whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service is a federal agency that helps more than 5 million Americans improve the lives of their fellow citizens through service, and whereas over 280 volunteers and service members serve Wayne County residents year-round, through the foster grandparent and senior companion programs, and whereas foster grandparents are role models, mentors, and friends to children with exceptional needs, the program provides a way for volunteers ages 55 and over to stay active by serving children and youth in their communities. Foster grandparents help children learn to read and provide one-on-one -on -one tutoring, mentor troubled teenagers and young mothers, and care for premature infants and children with disabilities. And whereas senior companions make a difference by providing assistance and friendship to adults who have difficulty with daily living activities such as shopping or paying bills, senior companions help these adults remain independent in their homes instead of having to move to more costly institutional care facilities. Senior companions give families or professional caregivers much needed time off from their duties, run errands, and often provide friendship for their clients. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Wayne County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 2nd, 2019 as Wayne County Recognition Day for National Service. And we do have to take a picture. We apologize. <laughs> we have to take a picture with the banner. So we need for our volunteers to, if they can, come around. If you all will come so that we can show that you all gave us this proclamation during this most important time. Again, we thank you. And thank you all so much for your support to us. And we do invite you to come when we have recognition events. And we promise we'll feed you real good. Yeah. <laughs> And our oldest volunteer is 92 years old. Oh, my goodness. Right. Thank you again. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I might make a motion to approve the uh, resolutions read. Motion made to approve the proclamation. Any discussion, Mr. I would just like to thank the entire group before they leave for the work that you're doing. And out in the community, there are folk who need to see you, and I know what you do for them is important. I just wonder why the lady who was speaking did not get her picture made. Well, why won't you up there? I mean, it's all about the volunteers. We but like you, them to have all of me. Oh, okay. we, we do appreciate you. Thank you so much. But, all right. Before, before the group leaves, I'd like to say that what we just witnessed over the last few minutes 
It's where the rubber meets the road in our community. We need, we need a lot more people to step forward and with the commitment that you have made to the citizens of Wayne County. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are helping people that truly need help. So thank you for all your volunteer uh, hours and the work that you're doing. Um, thank you so much. We need more of that. Motion been made on five six five. Raise your right hand, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next on our agenda is introduction of our new 911 director, uh, Chris Barnes, and uh, Chris is here today, and we really do appreciate it. As the board's aware, since the resignation of Daniel Wiggins, our former 911 director, uh, Chris has served as the interim role. We went out and advertised and interviewed uh, for the position. I do want to thank uh, Commissioner Acock, Sheriff Pierce, Chip, uh, Ginger with HR, and myself. We set out as an interview board. And it's nice when you go through the process and we can promote from one from within the <coughs> county. Uh, Chris has worked with the county for over 10 years. He started as a telecommunication uh, uh, telecommunicator and he recently served as our 911 database manager. And again, we were, uh, after he was hired, when he met with Chip and myself, we kind of gave him a list of priorities and I think some hair fell out during that time, uh, especially with the 911 center. Uh, hopefully we're gonna have a groundbreaking fairly soon on that moving forward. So, uh, but Chris has worked well with Ryan. Uh, Ryan Preble was also part of that interview board. Uh, but I appreciate the work that Chris has done in the past, and we're excited about Chris and his new role and opportunity moving the department forward in the future. So, Chris, if you want to stand up and say a couple of words. Sure, sure. Um, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I'm very honored to take on this task. A little bit daunted with the new 911 Center, but very, very excited what it means for the citizens of Wayne County, um, and for 911. Um, I did want to take this opportunity, opportunity to publicly thank you for your support for the 911 Center. Um, it means a great deal to all of us to have a new facility. Um, I will certainly do my very best to make sure that we are going to push forward and be um, something uh, that the 911 Center will be something that you guys can be proud of, that I'll be proud of, and the citizens of Wayne County will be proud of. Um, and in a way to kind of push the spotlight off of me, I did want to um, extend to you guys just a small token of our appreciation. Uh, it was actually very fitting that we're here today because this week is National Telecommunicators Week um, when we honor those um, rarely seen but always heard voices in the background. Um, that's why I'm wearing my thin gold line um, flag today is in um, honor of them. So if I may, I, I have something for you guys. And I'm left you wear it, if you would please, in honor of these guys this week. Um, it's got a little bit in here about what the thin gold line is all about and what it means to be a telecommunicator. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Again, thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank, you. thank, thank all your folks. Mr. Chairman, I also want to thank Chris uh, as well. We're going to do a lot of different things with training and a lot of different protocols, and, and um, I'm excited about um, uh, what he has done and what he will be doing. So we do appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, yes. before we leave this uh, statement, uh, thank you very much for uh, having the opportunity to ascend to that role. But I live in Mount Olive, and it's often been said that when you do a 911 call for help, it takes eight minutes. It's supposed to be eight minutes to get uh, to a site. Uh, in the past, there's been some question whether an average of eight minutes was eight minutes. And, uh, and when you count all the sites that somebody can get to in the city, and you average them with Mount Olive, it could be four or five minutes in the city, but 
is it true that it could be 12 or 13 minutes? Because see, that needs to be cleared up. It's like anything else that you use percentages and add a whole bunch of numbers together and then divide them by some number. Um, you know, response times can vary, absolutely. Um, and a lot of that is based upon district, it's based upon um, how busy the system is at the time. But I think, you know, after talking with um, Mr. Honeycutt, I think the ultimate push for us that we'd like to do is to go towards protocols. And when we have an emergency medical dispatch protocol in place, ultimately you're getting help faster. So my folks can walk you through, you know, pre-arrival instructions, CPR instructions, that sort of thing. So essentially, we're going to be reducing those re response times. Um, so I think going forward, that's the push that we want to make. So the answer to that is, for the most outlying areas in North and Southern Wayne County, from Mount Olive up to Pike, Fremont. Uh, and, and if, if you remember on our EMS stations, the reason why we have uh, <coughs> the new ones that are coming on board, and, and we'll talk about the Hunna in, in a little bit as well, is we basically took a dot and said, give me eight minutes from each spot that we'll be able to reach. So that was the goal once we build all of our EMS stations. You know, we still have the Nahunda station, we still have the Mount Olive station, and uh, Miller's Chapel Road to come online. So, but once we have all those stations in place, there should not be any parcel that is farther than eight minutes from a, a EMS station within Wayne County. Okay, second part of communications. Sure. Uh, say I'm somewhere in, Wayne County, okay. and I'm in my truck, and all of a sudden I need help, and I call nine, you know, for nine one one help, and I'm out on 55 West someplace. All of a sudden, I unfortunately arrived to a point where I can't respond anymore. Is there any way yeah. communication yes, with sir, my absolutely. cell phone? What, what, what are you going to so, What's going to happen? Years ago, uh, the phone companies got together with 911, and, and there's something that's been instituted that is phase two information, right? So phase two information will give my telecommunicators in the 911 center, should give them a location. It's a Latin long location, so if nothing more, we can pinpoint 50-yard radius of where you're at um, and get help there. Um, you know, certainly it would be a challenge to find you in a situation like that, um, but it's not one that's unheard of and one that we, we certainly tackle um, very often, actually. Does that answer that question? That, that, that takes me into the ballpark of... We, we've got you, don't worry. Coming. We got you. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Democrat. Democrat. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations. Now we'll um, have a... Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. I'd just like to make one brief comment. Uh, it, Commissioner Kamardi and I was down at the uh, reverse drawing back last month, mm -hmm. and a citizen passed out and they called uh, EMS, I guess 911, to call 911. And we decided that we'd take the privilege of timing them from the time that they got the call. Now, they was there at seven minutes and 59 seconds. John, <laughs> someone, someone announced, said John Bell is, is reflecting reverted back on the job say because he's timing it right now. <laughs> and and uh, John was more accurate than I was. Uh, by the time I thought about it, I looked down and I was somewhere between eight and nine minutes. But uh, I thought, okay. Uh, a, a young lady came in probably in that several minutes that John was talking about, I believe, but I didn't know that that's what she was. Then another group came in. My The group I was checking on came in about between eight and nine minutes. But I think the one that John counted was the lady was female correct. that came, I believe. It was correct. And, and she was uh, inside that seven minutes. So, you know, and she was down beside of her, you know, working. And uh, so. So congratulate them I'm for us. <laughs> Mr. Chair. I'm, a, I'm probably need help in about five. Okay. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, won't, I won't want to say anything, but since we got started, I might as well. Uh, you know, we, we keep talking about, keep talking about eight minutes. Eight minutes, that's, that's, that's the perfect picture. If there's a truck out on another call, it could take a little longer than eight minutes. The, the eight minutes is, that's, that's the perfect picture. It's not going to always be like that. Uh, and 
perfect example was yesterday. Every truck we had in the county was out at one time yesterday, just about all day long. I mean, yesterday was just one of them days, I don't know whether it was full moon or the crows were flying backwards or what. But anyhow, yesterday was, I mean, am I not correct? Yesterday was a crazy day. We run 75 calls yesterday in the first 12 hours. So, so the eight minute got stretched yesterday. And I, I just want to clarify that. It, you know, the eight minute, that's, a, that's the perfect picture. Okay, thank you. Well, since we're talking about, I'm sorry, the EMS stations, and this is just a global statement to everyone who's involved in that. This is a commission want, that wants to see the EMS stations be as everything they can be. I just leave it at that. Everything they can be, just short of an emergency room. I've always advocated that for Southern Wayne County, and I'm not, and, I'm, and Northern Wayne County. <laughs> but, uh, I want to see the EMS station be everything they can be. Okay, thank you. In other words, Mr. Kamati is not really stating what he really means. He wants an emergency room type setup in each. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. It, it, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> okay, we're at public comments time. Does anyone like to speak before this board? If not, that's closed. We'll go to our public hearing, Mr. Honeycutt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brendan. Uh, uh, Gray is here. Uh, Brandon is uh, our uh, director at the Wayne Executive Debt Board, and, and I publicly want to thank Brandon for the work that he has done, especially uh, with the leases and, and our corporate area expansion, and just really has taken our uh, Jet Board really to that next level. And, and also, uh, we've had as boards where some some trying to do some issues and, and some upgrades with UNC Health. Uh, Brandon's done a great job of finally getting a lease that both sides can agree to and just wanted to publicly thank Brandon for the work that he's doing. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, so the, the lease in, that we're discussing here today is a proposal of a period of up to 10 years between Wayne, the Wayne County and UNC Health. They will be occupying exclusively uh, corporate hangar number two at the jet port. They'll also have a section of, of land, a land lease, where they'll be putting their crew facilities for their uh, airmen there. They'll have uh, up to three uh, aircraft in the hangar, and there's a there's a, a ten year up to a ten year period of which we've got some flexibility on. Uh, throughout the lease if, if they change their mission or the number of aircraft or the aircraft valuation changes. But that's that's where we are in there. UNC is agreeable to these terms and and uh, Mr. Honeycutt and the, our legal counsel as well has been through it and everybody seems to be in agreement. Do we have any questions or comments? I just want to I just want to thank you for putting this together because um, it's just been lingering for so long. And um, I, I appreciate the work well, you put into you. it. Yeah, about four years now, so yeah. Yeah. it's time. All right. Thank you. Could I ask when can we expect this to be executed? Immediately. Immediately. They're they're prepared. We, so we're we're yeah, as soon as the public hearing. Yes. Yeah. As soon as we get it. Okay. Like All right. Five o'clock today will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Would it, ten. <laughs> Would anyone like to speak during this public hearing time? What is it at? All right. Public hearing's closed. Is it okay to take action today? Yes, sir. Mr. Daugherty. <laughs> I move approval <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> Motion's been made. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, please signify and raise your right hand. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate yes, it. All the Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Great job.
Mr. Honeyka, unfinished business. Yes, sir. Um, this is another one of those projects where, where I'm excited to get wrapped up and moving forward. Uh, as the board's aware, we asked for some Golden Leaf funding uh, after Matthew for the replacement of our Genoa pump station route or, or out on 117. Originally, not enough money was asked for during that process, and so we have not been able to move forward. So we asked for, we got a new estimate, we asked for additional money, and again, I want to thank uh, our assistant county manager, Chip Crumpler, for the work that he did with Golden Leaf, because we've had to go back twice to ask for funding to make sure that this project was fully grant funded and that no funds uh, came from county dollars. So we did finally uh, get approval. We have bid it out uh, with the alternate, and we are also recommending the alternate be approved as well. Uh, but we've received three bids, and the low bid is step construction at $394,278.25. And the recommendation is that we accept that bid and move forward with this uh, project. Motion to approve. Mr. Faze made a motion to approve any discussion. I do want to say one thing to Chip. You really know how to come back to the well. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. Or the lift station. <laughs> <in this> case. <laughs> Whatever is more uh, appropriate. <laughs> but we, we, we have. We've gone back to the well twice on this project. And as Chip said, uh, Golden Leaf has been phenomenal to work with and understanding of the process and understanding of our situation. Motion been made. All in favor, please signify by raise your right hand. Thank you. Next, consent agenda reviewed at 8 o'clock this morning, and um, things are all in order, it appears, so have a motion to approve. Motion um, to approve. Motion to approve. All those in favor, please signify by raise your right hand. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, wanted to, to make you aware of something uh, that was in the paper recently. Uh, as the board is aware, the school system made us aware of a meeting uh, to begin discussing their redistricting plans with their consultant. And, and again, this was the intro meeting. Uh, I was unaware that this was supposed to be a joint meeting or that we were formally invited. So. That was a misunderstanding on my part, but it was not clear that we were expected to participate. Uh, we did not have anyone in attendance because it was an informational meeting. Uh, but it's my understanding that they are beginning the process uh, that is going to be a couple of year process uh, for the redistricting. But the thing about redistricting, this is a decision that the superintendent and the Board of Education needs to make not the Board of Commissioners. So this is a project that they need to do uh, for themselves. Um, but we are, uh, in part of their uh, presentation was that they have asked for help from county planning and also from GIS, and we would like to formally offer that help to them to sit on their uh, planning team, uh, whatever they need. If they would like to have either Chip or myself as well sit on that planning team, we are offering that help at this time, uh, but we're willing to do what we can to help. But again, put it squarely back that it is a decision that the Board of Education must make with respect to redistricting, not the Board of County Commissioners. So if there's any questions with respect to that. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, you kind of, I don't remember exactly what your words were, but it's no mistake of yours. I mean, to my knowledge, any of us knew that they possibly wanted us there. Uh, so, you know, that was not your oversight. If it was your oversight, it's all of us's oversight. And by the way, I don't see the Boston School Board in here today. Yes, sir. Okay. Matter of fact, in the past, we never attend their meetings unless we get invited to attend. I have never gone to one unless I had an invitation. And, and usually invitations are as a joint request from the chairman to our chairman and as a joint meeting. The, 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 email, the email that was forwarded to me yes, sir. from the school board that you sent yes, sir. had nothing in there that the Wayne, all Wayne County Commissioners are invited or any one of us. 
It, that it was, was a FYI. It was a FYI, and that was it. Yes, sir. So that that should be made clear. Um, yes, sir. Newspapers probably got that too. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, but I also wanted to remind you uh, again in looking at our. Uh, opening up of our EMS stations, the Nahana EMS station. Uh, we have a grand opening set uh, Friday, May 3rd from, uh, what time did you? 9.30. 9.30 uh, till 11. Okay. Yeah, 9.30 to 11. So we should uh, cut the ribbon probably about quarter to 10. And I have to say, um, if all of you would like to attend appropriately, since it's in the Hunter, there will be the Hunter pork products for mm. refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> We're very Ma excited about that. Madam Clerk, would you please have someone invite the fire departments in that area, like Nahana, Fremont, Pikeville, yes, sir. probably Little River, yes, sir. Possibly be a Belfast. The, the ones that that station kindly yes, sir. is in the center of. I think that they. They need to be invited. I mean, it, it'd be you know 9:30 in the morning. Some of them may not be able to attend, but I, I think they still need the invitation. Yes, sir. And you're yeah. sending a calendar request to that. Yes, Thank sir. You. And that is all I have at this time. Thank you, Sean. Mr. Mayo. Uh, I um, probably go a little bit on the negative a little bit this morning <clears throat> there was a comment made a few minutes ago about um, our jet port and where it's going and the comment was it's taken four years to get to where we're at well the key is it took three years because commissioner Gurley and i sat on that board it took three years to get the dang funding that we needed from the dot it's easy for somebody to come along after the hard work's done and get the funding and say, oh my gosh, look what we did. I don't, I'm not begrudging that. What I'm saying is, is that George Wood, myself and Commissioner Gurley, as well as others in this room, went to the DOT for three years to get funding. The key is, is that you just don't go over there and say, hey guys, we're here, we want the money. If that was the case, this would have been done. So I'm going back to the old advisory board that we had at the jet port that did the legwork. Yes, everything is going great right now, but anybody can, if you got money, you can do it. So yes, I'm, maybe I'm a little bit negative, but it needs to be said that the previous advisory board at the jet port did the legwork to get to where we are today. Yes. Everybody's doing such a great job, and that's good. That's good. But I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Mr. Gurley, you were a big part of that. You and I were, okay? So having said that, I'm done with that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, I have a, a comment and some news to bring to the commission board. All the commissioners know about this. <clears throat> with a little bit of a heavy heart, uh, as chairman of the Department of Social Services Board, uh, we have received a letter of resignation from Tammy Shrinker, our DSS director. And I wanted to share this uh, publicly and also the commissioners, I think, already know. But <clears throat> Tammy, I've known about this for about three, four weeks. Uh, she confided in me that uh, she was praying, her and her husband were praying about this situation, that she had an opportunity to move back to closer to her home county. Uh, she's got grandchildren that's possibly on the way. Uh, it's, it was, this was a struggle for her. And so, uh, but we met with a, we met in, in a special session yesterday morning with the DSS board to inform our board as to um, her resignation, Tammy was there, and and the DSS board agrees that um, we're going to be fine. We have an assistant director, and we'll be making some decisions along these lines. 
at our next DSS meeting, which has been changed for your convenience to, from the 22nd <coughs> to the 29th, because 22nd is Easter Monday. So what we're gonna do is to change that to the 29th, same time, uh, same place. But having said that, I wanted to uh, read you uh, Tammy's uh, letter of resignation, which is dated April 15th. She says, uh, Dear Wayne County Department of Social Services Board, I would like to inform you that I am resigning from my position as director for the Wayne County Department of Social Services, effective May 24, 2019. Thank you for the support and the opportunities that you have provided me. I have truly enjoyed my tenure with Wayne County. Uh, if I can be of any assistance during this transition in order to facil facilitate the seamless passing of my responsibilities to my successor, please let me know. I would be glad to help however I can. In addition to that, I'm allowed today after uh, everything has been put in place is that Tammy is actually taking another DSS director position uh, in in um, Moore County, that's right, Moore County, which is next door to her home county. So she's able to, to move back. And of course, let's keep in mind, when she came here two years ago, she was, she was gonna give us 45 years. That was her max when she took the job. Well, you know, she's probably maybe a year too soon, and I asked, I told her, I said, you know, we need another year, but that's okay. We got people, uh, we got people that are capable. We feel like that uh, going forward, that we'll be fine. We have people in place already. So having said that, uh, I just wanted to let the board know that uh, on our meeting the 29th, we will be taking and making recommendations to the Board of Commissioners uh, as to the, the process that we need to go through to move forward. Mr. Uh, Craig, do you have any? Um, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayo. I uh, do want to thank Tammy for the work that she's done for Wayne County. And again, she stepped in at a, a very um, difficult time. Uh, as we were going from transition, um, but she really has done some reorganization. She really has stepped up our game. Uh, we have been very lucky and blessed to have her for the time that we have had her. And we're a much better DSS organization now moving forward. And, and as uh, Commissioner Mayo said, I think we are now in a good position that we have alternatives moving forward and, and thanks to Tammy's leadership. So uh, it, it is it, big shoes to fill, but, but we, uh, I think we'll be fine and, and strong moving forward as well. So, so we want to thank Tammy for what she did. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kamari. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also serve on the DSS board. Uh, I was out of town yesterday and communicated with Mr. Mayo by telephone. He kept me abreast of uh, the meeting. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Tammy on the great work she's done uh, in meetings. It's always been very professional, try to be very thorough. And I too think she, uh, you know, people forecast in a way what they have to do and when you're dealing with need to move to a certain place for your family. And that's what professional employees do. You, 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 you may move. But that means that if you move one time, you may have to move again. And as I understand it, when it becomes a situation of what's best for the family, then that's what folks have to do. But I also think she's made moves inside of the department to ensure that we have a strong DSS department moving forward, have all the confidence in the world that the recent decisions that have been made uh, are made for the long-term good of Wayne County. And that's what's really important. Uh, just to add to that, the large number of folks out here this morning to receive pins is very encouraging. Uh, it's encouraging to see folks that have served 35 years, but it's encouraging to see people who are in their first year, because that says that folk still want to come to work for Wayne County and, and, and believe that this is a good place to come to work. So I congratulate 
uh, all of our employees, especially if DSS director, but all of our employees who uh, come to serve, as well as the volunteers. Thank you. Mr. Dollery. I have one of those conversations today that uh, is a little bit out of character for me. Um, I really am greatly concerned, and I think uh, a lot of people in the county are concerned in regards to the squabble that we are currently having with our fellow board members over the schools. And I, I reflect on how we as a uh, nation are looking at those fights on the national level and on the state level. A lot of this has to do with communication. I served on this board for some six years and during that period of time the relationship between the school board and the board of commissioners was exemplary. In fact, people bragged about the relationship and that relationship came about not by happen chance but because we communicated. We're not communicating folks. We're not sitting down and communicating. I, for one, as a board member, want to offer an olive branch over to the school board and say, I apologize if anything that I have said has exacerbated that problem. I think it's long time that the school board and the board of commissioners come together and find a resolution before this thing gets out of hand. You know, you sit back and you see friends that start to battle over small things and they become stronger and, and more at, at odds with one another and it blows up to a complete falling out. When in fact, if they had only communicated a little bit in the very beginning, it never would have gotten to that point. I really think it's time that we lay aside those things that have happened in the past, the bruised feelings, and we find and we sit down, find a way to come together uh, and find a way to work again together for the betterment of Wayne County. Very difficult position for me to be in, but I think that it's time that we all find and we move into areas that we're not comfortable with. Let's come together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Bell. Um, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Doherty, uh, I would like to make one little correction. Back in the early 2000s, we used to have little squabbles and disarray, and I renamed it Intense Fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> and it got better. So maybe we need to go back to the Intense Fellowship, not, <laughs> not the squabble. But uh, I don't have any uh, regular committee meetings this time, but I, I did meet with uh, Kendall Lee, and we uh, two of the probation and parole uh, facilities and made a couple little changes. Minor, not anything that needed to come before the board, but just some where an office would be set up over there. And uh, matter of fact, uh, we're going to save money in the uh, fixing of the buildings over there because of the way we're going to lay it out, you know. And still the uh, probation and the juvenile people are going to have the same number of uh, spaces, if not more. And it's going to work much better, you know, and have it fixed where the juvenile people will not be able to communicate or go into the same interest as adult probation pro, which is illegal. So uh, it's all working out for good. Y'all need to take a trip over there and see what our facility people are doing to those uh, new uh, facilities. Matter of fact, uh, it's looking so good over there to the people in Raleigh think that I'm a hero. They think I did it all by myself. <laughs> But I had to let them know that I had six other people plus the county manager and other people that were working to uh, facilitate this, uh, these facilities. So thanks a lot to all you guys. And I told them that you all had a part in it. Mr. Aikon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, this time of the year is busy for all of us. You know, springtime, there's, there's something going on about every day, every night. Uh, and it, it's so so numerous that I won't even go into any detail. So that's all I have today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bank. 
going there will last you. You don't have the opportunity because all the good stuff's been used up. But um, there's a lot of wisdom in the words that uh, Commissioner Daughtery just said. And we've got to find a way to get back together because it's about educating our kids is what this is about. Um, and I'm not picking on Mr. West at all, but he was talking about the need of facilities at $160 million. That'd be, what, 12 and a half cents on the increase on our... Yeah, of course, I'm sure he didn't mean all that and we at one time. But there are huge needs in facilities and schools. There are huge needs in facilities for the rest of the county. We're going to meet a new jail here for tomorrow because this one's falling apart next door. We're trying to work on relocating our DSS department. That's going to be several million dollars. We need a new health department. And we're trying to save as much money as we can by staff doing the work that John just talked about just then. But we also got to really remember who's paying for this, and that's all the taxpayers. And, and I hate to keep repeating this, but right now, you know, we, we've got our agriculture community that's been hammered by two hurricanes in three years. We've lost some big farmers. Some are going to come out and not have any crops this year. We've got to bridge a little bit of gap, give those guys a chance to recover. Not to mention those people who were flooded out of their homes, because I know they get a reduced tax on their homes anyway. But, but if we sit down together like he was suggesting and we look at each other's plans, then we can prepare the tax increases that we need to cover all this funding. None of us can bite it off in, in one big bite. There's just no way to do it. That would be, as I was saying, that would be putting this walk in the green mile for Wayne County, and we don't want to do that. So we're adults. We can sensibly sit down together and find a way to make this work. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Payne, most everything's been covered, but I would like to say I uh, hope everyone has a chance to attend church and worship this Sunday for observance of Easter. It's a very special time in my life and a very special time in a lot of people. So I ask everybody to attend church and, and um, enjoy yourself and enjoy your spring break. So we're going to close session now, correct? Yes, sir. Same thing you went in before. Same as before. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Let me just make this comment briefly. Um, I think I need to give a shout out to our county manager because I'm just sitting here thinking about the position that we put him in, negotiating with other board members and other citizens of uh, Wayne County. And it's got to be a, a tremendous effort on your part to be able to go over there and smooth things out and. Uh, and make it work. So thanks a lot for your effort. Thank you. All right. I should go and close session. I should go and close session.